And House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Biden speaking out after a meeting on the debt ceiling yesterday. Both sides are far from reaching a deal, but some progress has been made. Watch. So the structure of, of how we negotiate has improved. So it now gives you a better opportunity. Look, I'm not more optimistic. You're only 15 days away and you're trying to raise the debt ceiling? The only thing that I think is better is now we have a format. A structure. We just finished another good productive meeting with our congressional leadership about a path forward to make sure that America does not default on its debt. But there's still work to do. President Biden will be cutting his G7 trip short to continue the debt talks, postponing planned stops at New Guinea and Australia. Biden also picking OMB Director Shalanda Young and longtime advisor Steve Reschetti to lead negotiations for the White House. Joining me right now is Georgia Congressman, member of the House Appropriations Committee, Andrew Clyde. And, uh, Cl Congressman, good to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. Great to be with you. Well, we want to talk about the power of the purse because here we are watching these negotiations. Markets are watching closely as well. We'll talk with Kevin McCarthy coming up in the program about an update. But what are you prepared to do on the Appropriations Committee if, in fact, you see continued pushback on, on limiting spending and uh, spending cuts for the future? Well, Maria, I think we just need to hold the line. Uh, the House has passed a great bill in the Limit, Save, Grow Act. I think it's responsible uh, in the way we're addressing the debt ceiling. Uh, you know, that's the job of the House, and we've done our job. It's now time for the president to step up to the plate and to acknowledge what the, the work that the House has done, uh, that we have negotiated tremendously among ourselves, and uh, we've got a great plan. When and I think this is the right plan. When you say hold the line, what does that mean? Because many of your colleagues have been looking to the appropriations process to control the power of the purse to ensure the change happens. That's what I'm asking you. What are the plans in terms of holding back funding uh, for the IRS, for example, or the FBI? You're on the appropriations committee. What are the plans? I certainly am. And, uh, you know, you said the FBI. I think that we need to uh, keep the FBI responsible. Uh, and the only thing they listen to is funding. And so I think the FBI, honestly, needs a significant cut. As you have seen in, uh, in the Durham report, um, <clears throat> there's issues there, issues that have not been addressed since 2016 and 2017. Uh, Director Ray, you know, the names have changed. I think the conduct is the same. So uh, we're going to have to significantly address them in appropriations. Yeah, I mean, the White House is refusing to comment on the Durham report. You know that Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene introduced articles of impeachment against FBI Director Christopher Ray. Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett joined me on Monday on how else the GOP can hold the FBI accountable. Watch this. We have the power of the purse, Maria. Um, the Congress is, has, is, is this country's checkbook, and we can start cutting funds to the FBI. They bungled so many cases as of late, and they continue to do so, and their arrogance is such that I think the, um, uh, you know, it's not the rank and file FBI agents. Congressman, I know that your appropriations subcommittee oversees that funding for the FBI. What are the numbers being talked about in terms of cutting back on funding for the FBI? Well, Maria, I honestly think the FBI needs to be made so small that they're not worth corrupting anymore. That's my opinion of it. Uh, we are not going to give them what they have asked for. In fact, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we go back to the last actual authorization, which was 2009. Uh, I think that wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, they need to learn that they have to maintain strict fidelity to the law, and the Durham report has shown that they're not doing that. Uh, and that continues to be the, 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 that way this day. I mean, just look at how they've treated President Trump versus President Biden with regard to classified documents. Yeah. I mean, there is a two-tiered system of justice here, and the FBI needs to understand that their job is strict fidelity to the law, and they're not doing it. So is it just money, or do you agree that Christopher Wray has to go? I mean, let's face it, we've got the Russia collusion story. They sat on the Biden laptop while President Trump was getting impeached. There are other issues that we talk about every day with regard to the bias at the leadership at the top of the FBI. Are you also looking to impeach Christopher Wray? 
Well, you know, they're also pushing back on House subpoenas for FBI documents that they're just not providing. You know, that's arrogance. That is incredible arrogance, and they need to learn uh, that that's not the way that this government operates. Uh, you know, impeachment is one thing, but uh, I definitely know that we can hold them accountable through the power of the purse. All right, we will leave it there. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks very much. Andrew Clyde Thank joining us this morning in D.C.